Hello everybody, welcome back to the Papo G channel. Today we are going to be comparing Assassin's Creed Origins to the development Ten commandments of the franchise. I hope you all enjoy. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos on the channel, check those out. I've compared every other Assassin's Creed game. So I hope to see you all at the end and I hope you all enjoy. <laughs> Moving ahead, next up we have Assassin's Creed Origins. This is going to be a long one. Origins is a messy game in terms of the commandments. It clearly heavily bends the very first one of the one of being about the fight between Assassins and Templars. And while Origins does found the Assassins properly, it doesn't truly begin until the epilogue of the game. Then in Odyssey we find out that there were actual proto-Assassins that was found before Origins. So what makes Origins special, aside from it being a good game? Well, Origins DLC made three made the three tenets of the creed, and Bayek is also less socially skilled than any previous assassin. He cannot blend or pip pocket, he cannot use any form of social style, only be able to hide in tall grass and bushes. And as much as I love Bayek as a character, he often favors brute force. And for these reasons the title fails commandment four. The connection between modern day and the past is strange. It's relevant, but the reason why is still a bit muddy. And I would say that this is a slight bend, at least in Syndicate and Unity we knew what we were doing. Bayek doesn't really, does not manage to kill innocents though, and history is relevant, if not mildly skewed. That said, Origins ditches the edgy art direction and DNA motifs, directly failing Commandment 6. A secondary issue with 6 is the lack of progress tracker, uh, ability to replay memories, databases are gone, but we at least have a tracker to see what quests we did. I also dislike the RPG skill tree for Assassin's Creed, but I think that's more of a personal complaint, uh, which is why Syndicate and Unity aren't knocked for it either. We also have that weird drug trip thing where Bayek fights a giant snake, which bends Commandment 7 of the uh, everything being technological and not magical. There are magic flaming swords, the apple apparently transports us to an actual afterlife in the DLC. I'll say Origin fails 7 for that reason. Like other games, Origins ends up creating a few strange things which, histor which uh, history, like the strange deaths of Pompeii, though this is likely due to the couple strange world designs in regards to city placement. I as well am to Cleopatra being unusually involved for such a sexist era, though this is handled decently. As a result, I won't say that it bends any rules about historical accuracy. That said, we do see the game breaking more things. The fantasy in Origins is not to be an assassin or a hidden one. We are a Medjai on a revenge quest that ends up spawning the assassins. I fully believe that this breaks that rule. The world design is large and impressive for sure, but lack of crowds, low buildings, wide roads, and lack of parkour opportunity in most cities much uh, feels much less in the main world itself, and I feel it breaks both rules as well as, um, though I will commend Origins on having an excellent world design insofar as making every region feel unique and make individual locations stand out, even if they are the same basic camps. In the end, Origins has six fa fa failures, Commandments 4, 6, 7, the Fantasy, Parkour, and World, and two bends, which is Commandments 1 and 3. Next up, we have the tragic Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Odyssey fixes none of this and only adds new issues. This time, there are no Assassins or Templars in the main game, you're an individual mercenary who's fighting a murder cult that's, uh, and that's aware of the Templars breaking commandment one. Uh, cause Sandra or Alexios is a ruthless killer who kills whoever they're paid to, uh, including potential to kill her stepfather or her actual father, her adopted brother, her real brother, her not to mention having no penalty other than a fine for killing civilians easily failing commandment two. The war between assassins and Templars matters in the present day, uh, but it has no connect, no relation to the past. The past is used as a reason to find Atlantis because apparently Origins told us to. The, the connection is kind of strained, and either way, the war does not exist in 431 BC Greece. Family Commandment 3. Like Bayek, Alexios and Cassandra are unable to use social stealth and are even worse at parkour, but can magically climb up sheer cliffs and fall great heights without dying or getting hurt and fight in massive battles consistently, easily breaks Commandment 4. Commandment 5 is uh, like Unity broken because the main story is about being a mercenary and finding your mother. Greece is merely a backdrop that could have been transplanted with just about anything else. Persia, Rome, China, Japan, 
there are a number of historical characters in the title, but they make zero difference in the main plot or making the world feel grounded. Uh, Commandment 6 is once again failed by the lack of edgy art direction and DNA motifs, but even worse now is the basic functionalities like a tracker to see what quests you've completed uh, are gone. Again, we have magic swords, babies falling hundreds of feet, and a character that lives 2,500 years. Some of the Olympus projects, uh, some of the Olympos project and connection to Leonidas through the sphere uh, could be fine with the Isu. Some of the Olympos project and connection to Leonidas through the sphere could be fine with the Isu did explanation, but these just take it too far to be believable in an otherwise fairly grounded series. Eight and seven. I will grant that eight and nine are fine here. Ten, however, is I believe is fully broken. The world is littered with massive structures like 500 foot long snake bones, massive statues standing on mountains, none of which are real or believable. The main character has magical superpowers of a demigod thanks to a staff, and regardless of which character you choose or is canon, the character shows up in the modern day. Choices you make impact the story's ending, and the fact that the narrative choice exists at all in the title that is meant to be showing what really happened it makes little sense. The main game itself is filled with lore and historical inconsistencies, besides the innumerable issues in the DLC, such as the pyramids being built 2,000 years later, uh, 2,000 years late. Even if this was to show the passage of time, it muddies the integrity of the historical product and lore. And this is ignoring the historical sexism that was com that was completely ignored. I know the book does all of this better, but we're looking at the game, not the book. So the transmedia should add to the lore of the game. Um, Thank you for watching and sticking to the end, everybody. This was Papoji comparing Assassin's Creed Origins to the development Ten commandments of the series. If you enjoyed, hit like and subscribe. Come back to the channel. Check out my other videos. Uh, there's going to be more videos to come. So I hope to see you all there.